Right. Chapter one. The Parker's Tales. No, Parker. Placed by the pond. Parkhurst was an unlovely prison, and Parkhurst Hospital was absolutely in keeping with the rest of the place. An ugly red brick building. It just stood there on its own, away from the main wings. Cracked brickwork, peeling paint, broken slates, gutters clogged with leaves. They all added up to a general air of just decrepitude. There were large sliding sash windows, but they were begrimed and massively barred. Heavy steel gates that were permanently locked stood in place of doors. It could be forgiven for mistaking the building's function because it certainly did not look like a place where people were nursed and cared for. And it wasn't. The hospital screws were mean spirited to everyone. Perhaps long ago, the milk of human kindness had flown in some of them, but no more. Long years of watching the most abject human suffering had inured them to daily misery that they were part of. There was just so, such a thing as a bedside manner here. It was characterised by indifference and downright cruelty. A few medical patients were confined to a surgical ward where they were waited for or recovering from or just about to get or just that. Uh, well, like I just said, there, they were, the, the operations had been done. That's a surgical ward. But other than that, that was about pretty much all they, they, they could do. They, did, they didn't do anything headwise. The rest were detained in the hospital under the mental health sections, awaiting certification and transfer to one of the special hospitals. <laughs> but they're criminally insane. These patients were mostly regarded as dangerous animals to be contained, and their violent behaviour was curbed. They were locked in cells for about a few hours each day. The loneliness of solitary confinement, it was exacerbating their already powerless mental state. Small wonder that on the occasion some would start to attack the screws. Then they would be beaten, flung naked into strip cells filled with mind-numbing drugs I left for days in a straitjacket for those who were not normal men easily coerced. They were men driven by obsessions so intense that their sanity had crumbled under the pressure. Men whose every waking second was a painful torment. In some cases they were men for whom death would come as a merciful release. Yet in the midst of all this ugliness of suffering, there was a place that was an oasis of peace and beauty. Tranquil. It was out of a side door from the F2 landing to a small and enclosed yard. In the middle lay a pond surrounded by neatly mown grass. Running around it was a white flagstone path. And on a fine day, the water of the pond would glisten with reflected light. Fish would swim lazily beneath the lily pads. Small insects would skitter across the surface. It was idyllic. It was an idyllic setting. Far from the smells of F2 and the haunting cries of lunatics locked behind doors. This is where you could just get away from her. For a short while, a man could remember he was human again. That there was another world apart from the one of concrete floors, brick walls and iron doors. He could lie on the grass and think of days when he played with his children. Hopefully not naughty like that. But yeah, in a similar setting, of days when he held hands with a wife or a girlfriend and he basked in the warmth of her love. The frantic heart would still. The frenzied mind would clear. A man could regain something of his own sanity. But 
was all too sure. I let the lay down, but a scream would call out. The exercise time was over for another day. Man, it just climbed reluctantly to the feet and ambled back into the building that they had to stay in. Dumb fucking concrete shit on building. The sweet fresh air would be replaced by the acrid, all pervasive smell of piss. In places, the sickly sweet smell of shit would assail the nostrils, or friendly screws would shepherd men back into the cells. The doors would crash shut with awesome finality, leaving each man incarcerated with all his own loneliness and recent memories of the place by the pond. It was one of these lunatics. He was seriously, certifiably, Fucking insane. I'm waiting for a place in Rampton or Baltimore. It was said that on two occasions he'd been taken to the very gates of Baltimore in a van and went to be refused admission because he was too violent. I fucking doubt that. And he was extremely violent to himself and others too. A powerfully built man in his early 30s, he was doing fire for GBH from Gypsy Stock, or should we say Traveller Stock. His swarthy skin gave him a Mediterranean appearance. Okay, then we could say that his remaining not be Roman or Gypsy yet, but never mind. Um, he was long, lying, greasy, black hair, all down around, hunched, muscular shoulders. His uh, inordinately long arms were covered with hundreds of scars caused by self mutilation. He walked bent over his long arms, was gangling about by his sides, giving me a definitely ape like appearance. He says we don't come from monkeys, eh? But it was on heavy medication. Every morning, noon, and night, he was given tots of various psychotropic drugs. He would drink each of these like an alcoholic taking his first drink a day. With each swallow, he'd shake his head. He rarely spoke to anyone. He just ambled about in his drug induced stupor. He could be tranquil, tranquil for most of the time. He would stumble beast like through his daily rounds a day from the intrusions of reality. But when the medication wore off, he could become especially dangerous. We like to sit by the pond, and each day, he would amble out into the yard and lie in the same place. There was a small mound at one end of the pond. He would stretch out there with his head on the mound and he'd stare at the sky. He was comfortable and comforting, just lying there. The vast infinity of space seemed to pour in through his eyes and cool his fevered brain. He was nice by the pond. It was really nice. For the past few months, Vic had had a friend of sorts. Tom was a young, intense scouser. Scouser to anybody American is um, somebody from Liverpool, Liverpool there. Yeah. With a pale, emaciated face and a frail, drug addled body. His corpse like appearance only served to emphasize his eyes, they burned with fierce intensity reflecting the flames of madness that raged in his brain. In the course of their solitary lives, Vic and Tom rarely met except on exercise. Then Tom would come and sit by Vic as he lay by the pond. They rarely ever spoke, and then only in monosyllabic shape. It would only be described as a friendship in the loosest terms. Just two lost souls warring each other with their own company. But they'll find someone's there. The heat in the hospital was stifling, no breath of wind, and the myriad smells just hung in the air. When their doors were locked for exercise, the patients hurried towards the brightness flooding in from that yard. And as Vic burst free from the building, the sweet, fresh air filled his nostrils, and his heart swelled in his chest. He headed for his usual place. Then he stopped. 
there, lying in his place by the pond, was a new fellow. He was stretched out. His head was on the mound. He was staring at the sky. It was exactly the position Vic usually adopted. Vic went up here. Vic stared at him more closely. The newcomer was plump, boring, and middle-aged. His clothes were unbuttoned, his hair unkempt, his face unshaven. And he just stared upwards, totally oblivious to his surroundings through dead fish eyes, glazed by the drugs that were given to him. Probably the same sort of drugs that Vic was on, but it wasn't fucking in his place, was it? It was Vic's. So Vic moved past him to the other side of the pond. Tom shuffled along behind, not a word had been spoken. Vic looked around the yard, three screws were used to improvise the exercise that day. We were still in a group by the doorway to the wing, to engrossed in conversation. Vic bent down, pushed his fingers into the earth either side of a large white flagstone, poured it from the path. He walked quickly around the pond, coming sideways onto the new fella, he raised the flagstone high above his head. With all his considerable strength, he smashed the edge of the flagstone into the unsuspecting face to the dull, meaty, dull. A stone struck flesh on bone. With a grunt of effort, Vic fell to his knees. He rained more blows into the mess of blood and gore that seconds earlier had been a face. A high pitched scream. Ran out into there as Tom appeared at Vic's shoulder and began smashing the face with a smaller piece of flagstone. The noise alerted the screws. One hurried to ring a nearby alarm bell. The other two ran towards the pond. The first rushed at Tom, pushed him off to the side. The second grabbed Vic's up, raised arms firmly, but gently, Go on, Vic, he said, Away you come. Vic rose slowly to his feet. He lowered the blood splatter and the flagstone, and he let it drop in the grass. He allowed the screw to lead him away, back towards the building. Tom had also dropped his flagstone, and was being gently pushed in the same direction. The new fellow, well, he makes no point, he lay motionless on the ground. Not a word had been spoken throughout the whole thing. Now there were dozens of screws lying in the yard, Pouring in from F2 through a gate on the wall. Some shepherded the rest of the patients in from exercise. They were stood in a semicircle, but a newcomer. A stretcher appeared, he was lifted onto it. They carried him into the hospital. The bloodstained flagstones were left where they had fallen, but eventually be examined by the police for the wood of lights. To be called in. To the experience there, the newcomer looked like he would die, but he didn't. Worse, would have been more merciful for it if he had, because massive brain damage would ensure that he never moved a muscle again. He was completely paralyzed. A complete cabbage of vegetable, both mentally and physically. At a subsequent trial, they can tell him were charged with attempting murder. Both were sentenced to life imprisonment. Strangely, their obvious insanity was not a mitigating factor. Sounds about right at doing it. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's fucking what you like Nancy's off and shit like that. Fucking rats. Anyway, they were shut off into difficult, in different parts of the prison system. Well, they were difficult as well. But they probably are more around with heavy medication to this day. Back at Parkhurst Hospital, everything was as usual. The water of the pond glistened in the bright sunlight. The grass grew lush and green. The blood long since washed into the mound by the rain. There were tools in the path where flagstones had once been. Over lunatics lay in that sunshine now. And the place by the pond looked peaceful. And I did like and completely unmarred by his terrible secret that had just 
take. Bye-bye.